Hi everybody, this is a recording of our recent video case discussion that we did over Zoom. If you wish to join us live for these case discussions, I leave links to our Telegram and WhatsApp discussion groups where we share radiology cases, useful radiology resources and updated links to various radiology webinars. If you like the video, please feel free to share this with your friends and colleagues. And make sure you subscribe to the channel for future video updates. So without any further ado, I will start sharing the recording. Hope you like it. Okay, uh, I'll scroll through the images and uh, you can uh, start describing once you start seeing the finding. And uh, if you have any issues, I will take over, don't worry. In the meanwhile, if uh, any of you want to chat in your answers, you can type in the chat box. Okay, I'll stop at the uh, finding and I'll, yeah. Sir, there is evidence of bronchiectasis in the right middle lobe and in the lingual segment of the left upper lobe with tiny nodular infiltrates in the centrilobular distribution involving the RM right middle lobe and the lingular segment of left upper lobe. Right side is involved more compared to the left side. No evidence of any consolidation, cavitation, effusion. Right. And yeah, the mediational window was normal. I'll, uh, we can just discuss the Okay, so uh, do you have any differential or uh, no. a single diagnosis? There is no volume loss. Right. Significant volume loss. So it appears to be of infective etiology. Right. There is no lesion obstructing the bronchus, right Good. main bronchus or right lower lobe bronchus. Very Good. Infective etiology, uh, atypical mycobacterial infection is likely. Very good. So uh, you described the finding very well. And uh, even your diagnosis is right. A couple of points on your description. Uh, these are just uh, minor things. Uh, just more to do with language. Uh, we can avoid uh, terms such as evidence of in our reports because uh, we can use them in specific cases but uh, we can just say that, uh, that there is bronchiectasis so uh, what happens is that uh, we have a trend of using uh, like reporting uh, uh, lengthier reports uh, the lengthier are reports some people consider they are better the more complicated words you use is people think like oh wow such a big report such a nice report but the truth of the matter is, the simpler we keep our reports, it's better for the uh, clinician. The description was very uh, good. The only thing I would want to uh, talk about is that uh, we should use simple language in our reports instead of making like long uh, reports. Uh, the simpler our reports are, the better it is for the clinicians. Uh, so in this case, I would uh, have described it as uh, uh, there is right middle lobe bronchiectasis with few ground glass nodules. So the ground glass nodules were very subtle and it's, uh, it was good that you picked it up. I thought it would be difficult to pick it up because of the resolution, but it's good that you picked them up. Okay, so as you said, the diagnosis in this case is mycobacterium avium intracellular infection or atypical mycobacterium. Among the atypical mycobacterium, this is caused by uh, mycobacterium avium intracellular or MAC. Uh, uh, as somebody pointed out, they also know that lazy Vendemir uh, syndrome. In the case of pulmonary mycobacterium avium intracellular infection. It commonly occurs with patients with uh, pre existing pulmonary disease, for example, uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or immunocompromised patients. It has a predilection for women 
older women who deliberately suppress their cuff reflex because in the older times what used to happen because of the patriarchal society or uh, older women were uh, thought to like they they were not allowed to speak up and uh, they thought that coughing in public is not a right thing to do so they suppress their cough and i assume that maybe it's some form of aspiration and this is the reason why this was commonly seen in that kind of population so that is why it's known as lady windermere syndrome so lady windermere uh, was a character from one of the old plays and that's why they have named after uh, that person that character from the play uh, typically it can cause right middle lobe syndrome uh, which is chronic right middle lobe collapse without any obstructive lesion so uh, varshika you described it very well the pertinent negatives that there is no obstructing lesion causing this syndrome so that was a very good pickup so uh, this can one of the this can be one of the causes of right middle lobe syndrome one interesting point is that these patients are not contagious like those with uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis which are highly contagious the common subtype is the upper lobe fibrocavitatory pattern uh, which can mimic tuberculosis and the less common form is the nodular bronchiectatic pattern uh, which we saw in the r case or which is typically described in the right middle lobe uh, or lady windermere syndrome and uh, there is another uh, syndrome associated with mycobacterium avium intracorporeal uh, avium complex that is hot tub lung uh, typically seen in patients who uh, use hot tubs and in that case the imaging appearance is that of subacute hypersensitivity pneumonitis so in that uh, we will get uh, central lobular nodules that are uh, typically distributed uh, central lobular ground glass nodules moving on to bronchiectasis so uh, there are different types of bronchiectasis that have been described it's usually a spectrum so as you see this is an image from uh, radiopedia uh, normally what happens is that the bronchi gradually taper towards the periphery that is a normal bronchus then the next first stage is cylindrical bronchiectasis where there is uniform dilatation of the bronchi gradually there is there are segmental areas which are which dilate more than the adjacent segment which gives rise to varicose bronchiectasis and lastly uh, when they are dilated uh, beyond uh, a particular uh, capacity then they become known as cystic bronchiectasis where they appear at lung cysts or cavities as we discussed last time so it's if you remember the pathophysiology and how uh, the disease progresses or the pathology progresses you may not like you may not want to uh, you may not have to uh, learn or ratify uh, that uh, pathology so it starts as uh, cylindrical and then progresses to cystic so what are the imaging signs associated with bronchiectasis uh, the first uh, usually it is not a diagnostic dilemma but for the uh, residents were starting off residents uh, gradually as you see more and more cases it will be very easy to diagnose this but we'll still go over the basic uh, important signs so it starts off uh, with like normally the bronchial artery and bronchus both are of the same diameter so when bronch when there is bronchiectasis what happens is that the bronchi bronchus dilates more than the bronchial artery so usually you should both of them should be of the same size so once the bronchus becomes larger than the bronchial artery that is a sign of bronchiectasis if you see bronchus within 1 cm of pleura you should think about bronchiectasis what happens is that bronchi gradually taper like if you see this uh, normal bronchiectasis you can see a normal bronchus they'll taper gradually towards the periphery so if you see one bronchus within 1 cm of the pleura that is a sign of bronchiectasis the next sign is signet ring sign so signet ring sign imagine a, a wedding ring or an engagement ring so typically if you just google signet ring you'll understand why is it called so so the large bronchus with the adjacent smaller uh, pulmonary artery which is nodular will give rise to this sign tram track sign because uh, dilated cylindrical bronchi if you cut them in a section they will appear like a tram track so trams you can think about like uh, our railway tracks we don't have trams anywhere in india but tram track is just imagine a railway track so they you see that sign and bunch of grapes is cystic bronchiectasis where 
uh, they'll uh, appear similar to a bunch of grapes. So that's self-explanatory. So this is a quiz case. Uh, uh, what do you think the diagnosis is in this case? You can chat in your answer. I'll uh, uh, shout out. OK. OK, we've got one answer. Uh, does Can anybody think of anything else? If you want, I can describe the finding. OK, OK. Right, so as Ayush and Govind rightly said, uh, you can answer me privately as well. Uh, no issues with that. If you don't want to answer in the public chat, it's uh, fine with that. I can read those answers as well. So uh, this, the findings in this case are there is bronchiectasis on the chest radiograph, which is upper lobe predominant. And in the abdomen, there is something missing uh, on the CT abdomen. Uh, we don't see the pancreas. The pancreas is replaced by fat. So yes, as Damayanti rightly pointed out, there is fatty replacement of the pancreas with upper lobe predominant bronchiectasis. So this is a case of cystic fibrosis as Ayush and Govind rightly said. So we'll revise the common uh, clinical conditions that are associated with bronchiectasis and their typical imaging appearance. Uh, Allergic uh, bronchopulmonary aspergillosis is uh, a common condition where we see uh, upper lobe predominant bronchiectasis, which is central. And there is these are commonly associated with mucus plugging. Uh, does anybody know what is the imaging appearance uh, in allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis? What is the sign that is commonly described? Perfect, perfect. Everybody, everybody got it right. Govind, Ayush, Dhamianti, and others who uh, I can't pronounce their names. So finger in glove appearance. So the dilated pulmonary, uh, dilated bronchi and mucus filled that gives rise to a finger in glove appearance. Uh, that is typical of allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis. Uh, tuberculosis is also a common cause of bronchiectasis because in the later stages there is fibrosis which gives rise to bronchiectasis. Chronic atypical mycobacterial infection as we saw and the distribution in those uh, patients is middle lobe and lingula. So IR James syndrome is also a, dis uh, uh, also a common cause but we don't see that very often. Uh, and in these, amongst the syndromes, uh, cystic fibrosis, upper lobe predominant, uh, typically in pediatric patients, and there is associated with uh, pancreatic uh, uh, fatty replacement and a bunch of other uh, systemic manifestations. You also see liver cirrhosis in that. Primary ciliary dyskinesia, uh, the other name for that is uh, with, uh, when it's associated with sinusitis and bronchiectasis. Uh, does anybody know what is known as? What is the syndrome called as? So what is the syndrome? Okay. Okay. Sultan and Dr. A.G. got it right. I am assuming everybody, uh, yeah, everybody is got it right. So it is cartagenous syndrome. So cartagenous syndrome is situs inversus, chronic sinusitis and bronchiectasis. Munier-Kuhn syndrome. So there are two syndromes which are associated with uh, uh, dilatation of the more central bronchi. So one of them is Munier-Kuhn syndrome where the trachea will be dilated and for the middle lobe bronchi, middle order bronchi, uh, we have William Campbell syndrome. The other causes are not as common as uh, uh, the ones we discussed. You can go over uh, this uh, radiology, uh, radiographics article. Uh, you can point your phone or later when you watch the video, you can just or just Google it. Uh, it's a very good radiographics article where they talk about uh, imaging of bronchiectasis and their uh, differentials. So, so yeah, so that was our case and a short discussion about. Uh, uh, cystic bronch uh, about bronchiectasis, various pathologies, imaging appearances, and differentials. And uh, we'll uh, take up uh, questions. So somebody is asking uh, if you can ask me questions in private as well. It's not an issue. Uh, uh, if you uh, are hesitant in asking in the public chat, uh, so someone's asking me if uh, 
uh, if uh, I can explain the findings on plane radiographs. So plane radiographs, uh, uh, if you try to just show you the case here. So usually it's difficult in plane radiographs. You just see prominent in the initial stages, you just see prominent bronchovascular markings, which can either be vascular or to bronchi, but in the later stages, uh, you may see uh, linear uh, tram track appearance. Uh, for example, if you see here in the upper zones, you have parallelly arranged dilated bronchi. So that is a sign for uh, cylindrical bronchiectasis. And later, uh, you may see uh, when there, there is cystic bronchiectasis, you can see large cavity lesions. It's tough to diagnose only on the radiograph. But uh, yeah, in that cases, and the differentials would be fibrosis, fibro uh, fibrotic changes, secondary to infection, uh, and uh, vascular, uh, prominent vascular markings as well. It's tough uh, only on the radiograph, but the more, uh, uh, more you see, you will uh, more be able to uh, diagnose these on chest radiographs. Okay, someone is asking how to follow. So uh, you can uh, uh, join our uh, Telegram group uh, or our WhatsApp group. We are more active on Telegram because it's easier to manage uh, on WhatsApp. Uh, I'll share the link for both these uh, in our in the video description so that uh, those who want to join, uh, there are other cases, uh, other people who share cases and other important uh, radiology resources. So you can follow Telegram is the best, best place I would say uh, to follow. Uh, uh, whatever we do and uh, if you're not aware we have a website radiogyan.com and we have uh, a bunch of uh, around 500 to 600 spotter cases and there's uh, a lot of other radiology material also okay uh, does anybody uh, else have any question or want to talk about uh, anything specific or if you have any suggestions uh, you can type in uh, otherwise we can just uh, end today's meeting Hopefully, uh, you guys benefited uh, from the meeting. And I would request that uh, those who attended the meeting, you just tried a few things that you learned in today's class so that it is a revision for you. And those who did not attend, they will have an, uh, they will also gain something from it. Most importantly, you do it for yourself, not necessarily for anybody else. But once you uh, revise it immediately, that will stay longer in your memory. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Uh, hopefully, it was uh, helpful. Okay, uh, so uh, Vandana is asking uh, if uh, middle lobe bronchiectasis is specific for tuberculosis. No, middle lobe bronchiectasis is not typical for uh, specific for tuberculosis. Uh, middle lobe bronchiectasis, with the kind of changes that we saw in today's case, that is typical for uh, chronic mycobacterium avium intracellular infection, that is non tuberculous mycobacteria. In tuberculosis, we can get it anywhere, but commonly we see them in the upper lobe because the primary infection usually up, up, occurs in the upper lobe. Okay, I think uh, that's it. And uh, we're doing good with time today. We finished in half an hour. And uh, hopefully you guys like the talk and uh, we'll try to do them regularly. And uh, yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that next time I upload a video, you guys are notified about it.